Welcome to this video tutorial on creating an animated sunlight effect for an interior view in Rhino. This video follows on from the previous video looking at creating an interior drawing in Rhino using a 3D model of an internal space. I'm going to be using that same model in this tutorial and we're going to be creating an animated sun effect rendering out the shadow at different points of time during the day and overlaying that onto a pre-made drawing of this space. Now, to start this tutorial, we're first going to just set up our render to make sure that the sun is looking good within this space. To do this, I'm going to go up to the render panel and we're going to set the current render to the legacy Rhino render. Now, I'm using Rhino 7, so this will show up as the legacy version, but if you're using Rhino 6 or below, it will just be the standard Rhino render and you'll only have one option there to choose from. The reason we're choosing this is it's going to be a lot quicker to render out the shadows and we really just need the black and white shadows for this effect because we're going to be overlaying it over the top of a coloured drawing. Now when you select that legacy Rhino render, we're then going to go into the render properties and we're just going to check a few settings before we render out our image. The first is that we just set the backdrop to a solid colour and make sure our lighting is just set to sun and we haven't got the skylight turned on. If you have the skylight turned on, you can turn it off by ticking that box there and this will speed up the render process. We just need the sunlight and the shadow which can be caused by this sun setting. Now, actually we don't really need to go into the sun settings here because this is going to be controlled by the animation. So we can just hit OK for now and keep that as it is. Once you've set those, you may want to also set the resolution of your final render. I've set mine to a custom and we've just done a size which is locked to the viewport aspect ratio which is the ratio I've set up in my view at my eye level on my right hand side and we've set these values based on the pixel size of the image we want. I've kept this quite small because it's going to have to render out every frame of this animation so obviously if you've got a very high number of pixels this is going to take a lot longer and your animation might take a while to render out fully. We're going to set the quality to final quality here so we can have a sharp quality to our final images. Once that's set, we'll hit OK and we're going to do a quick test of what this is looking like just by selecting our image, going to render and hitting the render button there. And there we can see we've got the light coming in and it's a nice kind of contrast between the light and shadow there. And I can see that it's giving me some dynamic shadows, which is what I'm looking for. So that's great. We've set up the sun. Now we need to add the animation effect. Now to add a sunlight animation, we need to go along to the render tools here. And once we click on that, we'll have these three buttons here, which are our animation tools. If we look at the first one here and we click on the cascade, bar there we can see our four animation tools that we can use within Rhino and we're going to be using this one day sun study here so to select that we just left click on this little sun study option here once we've done that it's going to ask us for a time and place and this we can set to be the location of our model it's usually set to where you want your model to be and I've set mine to be in London here once you've got that you can also adjust the north angle if you want to, if for any reason your model might be not facing exactly north, but that's depending on how you've modelled it. Usually, as it says here, the north angle is kind of located at the y-axis, so wherever the y-axis is pointing, that's your north, and you can line up the model with that. Once we've done that, we then want to select the kind of date in the year that our sun study takes place. I'm going to set mine in June because that's the lightest month of the year. We get the most sunlight in England in June, so we're going to be using that so we have enough sun to show quite a dynamic effect here. And I want the sun study to be throughout the day, so we're going to do it from 6 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night. So that's 12 hours in which the sun will be moving across the sky in this animation. Now the next option, the minute between frames, is the most important one here because this will work out how many frames are going to be rendered out within your animation. At the moment it's saying a frame will be rendered out every 30 minutes, so we'll have one at 6 o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30 etc. All the way up to 6 o'clock in the evening, which essentially is going to be 24 frames of animation. Now bearing in mind that usually an animation is from anywhere between 24 to 30 frames a second, this will actually be only one second of animation, it's going to be very quick. With 30 minutes between each frame. So if we want to slow that down, we need to kind of lower that value so it frame occurs more often. So for this instance, I'm going to set it 
for a frame every five minutes there. So that should hopefully be around six seconds of animation there because we've divided that previous number by six to give us five, which should be a little bit longer and a little bit smoother in the sky. The smoother that you want and the slower that you want your animation to be, the lower this number needs to be between the frames. But I think five should be fine for now. The file type will just keep as JPEG and the capture method we want to keep as render full. So it's going to render out an individual frame for each of these minutes between our sun study and they'll have the kind of accurate shadows within there. Make sure that your viewport is also the one that you want to render, which is this eye level view. Once we've done that, we're going to hit OK and there our animation is set. Now to render this out, instead of hitting the render button, we actually need to hit the record animation button here, which is the red icon with the black dot in the center. We're going to hit record animation and it will ask us where we want the animation to save, which target folder. We're going to select that and we're going to kind of save it in whichever folder we want our kind of animation to be saved in. And you can give it a name if you want to as well, but we'll just hit select folder there. Once that's done, we're then going to hit enter and what will happen is it will start rendering out our frames of animation. You can see here it's rendering out each one and saving them automatically. And if I open up the folder there, you can see these frames of animation being saved out as they're rendered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to let this animation save out so we'll have all of our frames by the end of it. And depending on how many frames I've set or the kind of minutes between my frames, there might be more or less depending on how smooth you want your animation to be. That animation has now completely rendered out. We have all of the frames saved here and you can see it's rendered out 144 frames there of animation. If we want to preview it, we can just double click on this link here and it will take us to a page which will essentially give us a preview of the animation. We can hit start here and here you can see a little preview of that lighting animated and we can see sort of how smooth that's come out depending on the amount of frames that we've rendered. So there we have our kind of animated sun. And now the final part of this tutorial is combining this with the line drawing that we've set up for this image. Now I'm going to be using the line drawing that I previously set up in the last tutorial. This drawing is seen here. And we're going to be taking this colored version and overlaying our kind of rendered animated shadow layer on top of this. I'm going to show two ways of combining the rendered shadows with a static image. The first is going to be using Photoshop and the second will be using After Effects which is a slightly more efficient way of working with animated content but if you're not used to that software you can follow the Photoshop version to get the same final effect. We will start with Photoshop. Now to do this we're going to begin by bringing in our shadows into Photoshop as a kind of complete set of images. To do this, we're just going to kind of copy the link of where they're saved. And then in Photoshop, I'm going to go to File, Scripts, and Load Files into Stack here. We're then going to hit the Browse button to browse for those files, locate where that animation is, select all of the frames here, and hit OK. And this will then load all of these frames up into this Load Layers panel here. Once those are loaded in, we're then going to hit the OK button to load those into our Photoshop file, like so. And depending on how many you've got, this may take a longer or shorter amount of time to load all of these layers of animation in. And here you can see they're loading in now. Once you've brought all of these in, we're then going to turn these into an animation. And we can use Photoshop's built-in animation tool to do this. This can be found under Window and timeline here. And we're just going to take that timeline and we're going to drag it to the bottom of our frame and clip it in here. So it's loaded up there. Once we've got that, we're going to click the create frame animation. And what it will do is it will make an animation with one frame being the start of your animation here. Now, in order to kind of make an animation using all of these frames, we can then click on our little options panel here and go make frames from layers. What this will do is it will turn all of our layers into an individual frame, each with a kind of just under a second per frame. So if we then play that, it will then play our animation as a kind of completed animation in sequence here. 
Now you can see that it's actually going backwards at the moment and this sometimes happens when you use this technique it kind of brings in the frames in reverse so if we want to then reverse that animation we can just click back on the options and hit this reverse frames to reverse them again once you've done that i just usually take all of my frames hold the shift key to select them all and just drop them in a folder called frames here this way it keeps them nice and tidy and we have all of our frames there and in their own kind of location. Now what we want to do is now we want to overlay these shadows onto the top of our drawing. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go and find our drawing file. Here we'll drag and drop it into our Photoshop file like so. Now we have our drawing in our Photoshop file. We're then going to create a new layer here, move it below our frames and just fill this in with a white fill like so to provide a background for our image because we're going to lower down the opacity of the frames and we don't want it to be transparent on that back piece. Once we've done that we're going to go and make sure we're on the first frame of our timeline, select our drawing and just move it onto a multiply blending mode. Now this should automatically set it to multiply for all the other frames but if this doesn't as in the case here where we can see that frame 2 actually has remained on normal what you want to do is just select that first frame go into the options panel here and go match layer across frames and we can hit all of these match position visibility and style hit ok and then it will kind of match up that blending mode across all the frames so when we click play you can see that the shadow is now being overlaid on top of my drawing here now the last thing i want to do is just lower the opacity of that shadow to make sure that it looks kind of correct and not too dark on top of my drawing so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to frame one again, go to the frames here and then just lower down that fill color until we get it to around, I think, probably a 30, 40 percent here. So we've got a sort of half toned shadow. As you can see, it's going across all frames there. But same again, if you need to apply it across all of them, you can go and click that match layer across frames option. And what you should be left with is your kind of moving shadow layer across your drawing like so. Now what we could do to finish it off is we can also add a color tint to the shadow if we want to and this is very much in the same way as we did it before with our static drawing we can go to our adjustment layers down here create a hue saturation i'm going to use colorize put it on a sort of blue tone here up the lightness value and up the saturation and i'm going to move it across to a good frame so we can see how that's looking and just sort of play around with those values until you get this kind of look and feel that you're going for. And I think something like that works quite well. And then just to sort of preview it, I'm just going to hit the play button to play it back to check that my animation is playing as intended. So there we've got a simple way of rendering out a sun study and overlaying this onto a 2D line drawing using Photoshop and Rhino 7. What we can do now to get it from here is a video file is to save this out you just want to go to file export and render video here and from this point we're going to render this video out as an mp4 file just call it animation for now choose a place to save this out and then hit render to render out this animation once you do it will take a little bit of time to save this out and export it as a video but you'll be left with your video file we're now going to repeat this process but using After Effects to create our final composition. To do this we're going to open up After Effects and we're going to begin by clicking this new composition from footage option. With that open we're going to locate our animation, select the very first frame and make sure this import a JPEG sequence is ticked there. If we then hit import it will then import our whole animation here but also put it into our timeline at the bottom and we can press the space bar here to preview that animation like so with that now imported in we're then going to go into our folders go back to our sun animation find our drawing and just drag it in to our project file here with the drawing in we can then drag it on and put it below our main sort of rendered shadow layer here so we sit the kind of color drawing below the shadow then exactly the same as we did in Photoshop we're going to select that animation layer we're going to go to layer go to blending mode and put it on a multiply 
then we're going to just drop down in this little arrow here to open up the transform panel of that animation and we're just going to lower that opacity down to a nice level. Now you might find, as mine has here, that my colour layer is actually a lot larger than my shadow layer. We need to make sure that they're the same size. So to do this we just open up the drawing layer, open up transform, go down to scale and just scale this down until it snaps to the frame and it should snap on when it gets to there and mine's around 31% there. So there you see if I play it back and forward we now have that shadow overlaid onto my drawing like so. For the last point if we want to colour tint our shadows like we did in Photoshop we can select our shadow layer, go to effect, go down to colour correction, go all the way down to hue saturation and exactly the same we can add a colourised layer to this. We can change the hue of that to be a sort of blue hue there which should be around the sort of 200 value. We can up the saturation, up the lightness as well and there you can see it's kind of colour tinting my shadow slightly and then if I play it back we then have that blue shadow overlaid onto the top of our drawing. Now to render this out as a video file all we need to do is go to composition and add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. What this would do is it will open up a second program called Adobe Media Encoder and in that program we can then export out our animation as an mp4 file that you can use within your videos, you can upload onto your sort of Instagram accounts or wherever you want to put your final animation. So you'll see once that media encoder opens up, it might take a little bit of time but then the animation should appear here. Here we can choose the format and I'm going to use an H.264 format. Always match the source and it will keep the same resolution as the animation you brought in. And then we're going to kind of use the output file that we're given here and we could always sort of tailor that to wherever we want to save the animation. And then when you're ready to go, just hit the start queue button to render out that animation. So thank you for watching this video tutorial on how to create an interior animated sun within your interior drawings. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. I hope you found this helpful and if there are any other videos you want to watch on rendering techniques, animation and graphic techniques using Rhino, Illustrator or Photoshop, please check out the videos on the channel.